like goes into red. Yes. It's like, shut up, you loud cow. Okay. <gasps> this is why we don't do lives. You have to start over. Okay. Ew! I hate this so bad. So much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Well, the good thing is we're just in that little box and nobody's really paying attention to us. Why are we in watching the box? this? So that people we could it. never do pillow talk. You couldn't. <laughs> no. It's just here's the thing. Why is it flipped? Because then it's I'm. Because it's like a mirror image. It's bothering you. I need like plastic surgery to make my face. I mean. I don't know if there's a way to make it not be a mirror image. Yes, I just um yeah, I mean we're gonna talk and you know, in a room. You're gonna get cancelled. <laughs> don't get me cancelled. I will. I'll say guys, this is my mom. She kicked me out for being gay and she called me a dyke. <laughs> and I'll end it and post it. You're here for Mother's Day. <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, you came, made me come back for Mother's Day. Oh. This is like a cowboy shirt. Doesn't it look good? But like, I'm not ugly. I tried to submit a sweater that has this bias shaping for a magazine, and they were like, um, so like, we've had so many problems with sweaters knit on the bias when it comes to size grading, and I was like, oh, well, I've done it already. Them this, and they're like, oh. <laughs> Still didn't publish it. Okay. Oh, that's so, true. But I really feel like this is what's up, right? Like, no, it's cute. Yeah. It's so cute. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fellow knitters. So <laughs> it's Mother's Day, and Eliza hates this, but we're doing it. Um, and Carter's here with us today. He's the good dog. All right, so in the last video, we did this little swatch that was part one of the yarn over increases. And today, we are doing the double central increase, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do the mock I-cord bind off. So we're just gonna jump right in. Um, if you have any questions about what's going on today, go ahead and go back to part one and I kind of go into detail about each of these swatches that I'm doing for the four parts um, so you can get more information about that there. So I'm going to zoom in on this guy. Let's make sure our brightness is all the way up. Okay, so I'm going to go through exactly as the instructions state for this swatch and you can obviously read the instructions on the video or on my website. It will be available on the blog post for this um, swatch also. So for the central double increase, we're going to cast on five stitches just like we did for our last swatch. I'm going to move this out of the way and hopefully today my little floating head um, stays put. In the last video it traveled to sort of the center of the video and um, the center of the screen, which was weird. And I wasn't gonna redo the whole video. What? Um, so the little talking head box, see how it's in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> in the last video, when I posted it, that little box decided to travel to the middle. <laughs> so I'm like knitting, but then there's this little square just like right in the middle. Oh, it was weird. Okay. Emily was like, what the heck happened there? And I was like, listen, lady, <laughs> we're having technical difficulties. Let me live. Oh my gosh. What's out there? Like a, a weef. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, so we cast on five and I'm going to knit two rows here. So we're going to fly. We're going to knit two rows. I did long tail cast on for this. 
You can do your preferred cast on method, of course. All right, so for row one, we're on the wrong side. I'm gonna knit two. This stitch, this is the stitch that you're going to mark for your center stitch. Um, you can use a removable marker for that, or you can put markers on either side of it. You just want to make sure you know where it is. I'm not going to mark it because I can see it in my knitting clearly enough. Um, but if you would like to mark it, please do so. And we're going to knit our last two stitches. So row two is a right side row. This is where we're going to do our first increase. So we're going to knit our two edge stitches. And we're going to knit, as the pattern would state, to our center stitch, which in this case is the next stitch. Um, this is where we're going to increase. We're going to knit into that stitch and leave it on the left needle. Do not drop it off your left needle. Then we're going to do a yarn over. And we're going to knit into that stitch again and drop it off the left needle. If you've done brioche before, this is a brioche increase, um, but it is so useful in any two stitch repeat, like brioche, like ribbing. I absolutely love it. And when you do it in brioche or ribbing, it's not as obvious. The stitches flow really nicely. Okay, so we're on a wrong side row, knitting our two edge stitches, and we're just purling to the last two stitches. You don't have to do anything special for that yarn over um, in this case, and knitting the last two stitches. So we're gonna do this again. What do you think, Carter? It was very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You want to try? But you is dog. Okay, so we're <laughs> knitting those first two stitches, and we're gonna knit to our center stitch. Oh, honey's jealous. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do that increase again, knitting into the stitch. Leave it on your left needle. Oh, honey, you don't. She's sitting. She wants to be the star. Okay. Uh, yarn over. And we're knitting into that stitch yeah. again. <laughs> she wants her brother. And then we can drop it off the left needle. And knitting to the end here. Each one of these increases will increase two stitches, right? Wrong side row, we're knitting two. We're going to to the last two. And knitting. So let's do that again. We can really see these increases taking shape. two edge stitches, knitting to our center stitch. There she is. Knit, leave it on the left needle, yarn over, knit into that stitch again, and then knit to the end. All right, so I'm gonna continue on this way you do that also and then when we get a little bit of length here I'm going to show you that mock I-cord bind off it's super stretchy it's so cute um, so give me just a second we'll be right back okay so for time purposes I'm not going to increase the full number um, just so that I can show you the bind off without it taking long amount of time, but I'm going to do my last increase here, knitting two, knitting 
into my center stitch. And then we're ready for our increase, knitting into that center stitch, yarn over, knitting into it again, dropping it off the left needle, and knitting to the end. Um, so the next row is a wrong side row, and we're going to knit that. here that you can see at the base of the swatch right here this is a little garter ridge and I'm gonna do an increase in between this little garter ridge and the bind off so I'm just knitting into these stitches instead of purling So now on the wrong side row, this is important, um, always on the wrong side row you want to do this bind off, and I really love it against garter, which is why I've got this little garter ridge here. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit our first stitch. And you know, this is all about yarn overs, right? So we're going to do a backward yarn over. If you don't know what a back yarn backward backyard yarn over backyard. a backward yarn <laughs> over is um, instead of bringing it around the front to the back we are bringing it around from the back to the front okay I'm gonna do that one more time from the back around to the front okay Ooh, <laughs> slickery so that's our backward yarn over and then we're gonna knit one these two stitches over that knit stitch and we're going to repeat from our backward yarn over so backward yarn over stretchy techniques class uh, we use tons of yarn overs in that class to create these stretchy um, bind offs and the reason for that is that you have this extra little bit of yarn that's bringing a little air into the knitting detail in that stretchy te techniques class but this is just a fun little bind off that's great for shawls or necklines where you want to be able to get your head through your sweater um, it's 
very clean. It is very easy. And it's very stretchy. Eliza's taking all these fiber classes in college, and she's going to become a master knitter, and she says she's taking over for me. Yeah, so, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> this yarn has been knit and unknit so many times it's splitting and becoming sad but as you knit this you'll see getting into the rhythm of that backward yarn over is so easy. Get into the end here and you'll get to see that pretty mock eye cord. Get off me, yarn! <laughs> <laughs> So if you had even a shawl, this would be a great bind off for that. But that clean edge is why I love it for around the neck of like a bottom up sweater or one that you pick up the stitches and finish the neck in finishing. Um, it's so clean, it's so beautiful. And if you have a full garter stitch, pattern and you bind off this way. I just think it's... <laughs> we were just talking about how my phone goes off constantly. Um, I think it's such a nice little edge for a garter stitch also. So that's it. It's so easy, so simple. And this was a quick little video today. Um, next week we will be doing... So here we're using the yarn overs to do right and left slanting increases along the side of your center stitch. And here we have that same mock eye cord bind off. Of course this is blocked so it looks very neat and tidy. And this is not so it looks a hot mess. Block your knits guys! Block your knits! This is a PSA. They're not good. Oh, I know. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Block your knits. Go from this ugly thing to this beautiful thing. <laughs> I just knit this sweater. Why doesn't it look like the magazine? Did you block it? No? Okay. Alright. So. Until next week. Week. I hope you enjoyed your Mother's Day if you're a mama, or if you have a mama. Thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys like it that I sat here the whole time? They all said yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than the dogs barking the whole time like the last video. There were the foxes were out, which the foxes were out this morning. The foxes were out in the last video and the dogs were going completely bananas. Alright. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys real quick. I had talked about doing this increase for um, ribbing or brioche, 
if you've done brioche, you know what it looks like. If you want to see what it looks like in the ribbing, I remembered that I have this little swatch that I'm working on for a potential design. Um, here we have a twisted rib, and here is that gorgeous double central increase. And there it is. stays in pattern for that ribbing. Isn't it lovely? I did it down here too in this tuck stitch since that was a two stitch repeat. See how it looked? I think it looked pretty good. It was a little wonky on this first one but I think it looks pretty nice. Just let me know what you think. Ribbing for the wind.